I'm Raheem Kassam, Editor-in-Chief of TheNationalPulse.com. We're here at Mar-a-Lago for an exclusive one-on-one -on -one sit-down interview with President Donald J. Trump. We cover a lot of topics in this interview, the political, the personal, and I really hope you enjoy it. I hope you enjoy getting to see the President Trump that the fake news media doesn't often show you. Enjoy. Mr. President, thank you so much for joining us here on the National Pulse. Thank you. You have been to Iowa. I have. You have been giving some huge speeches to some huge crowds, but I noticed specifically the focus on immigration. And I wonder if it brought to my mind the thing from your inauguration speech where you talked about American carnage, right? right? Yes. And I wonder, you know, between the crime, especially in the cities, uh, immigration, the border, uh, what's going on overseas at the moment? Did you ever think you would see this level of no. American carnage? No, nobody has ever seen anything like this. And I think we could say worldwide. I think you could go to the, uh, you could go to a banana republic and pick the worst one, and you're not going to see what we're witnessing now. Uh, no control whatsoever. Nobody has any idea where these people are coming from. And we know they come from prisons. We know they come from mental institutions, insane asylums. We know they're terrorists. Nobody has ever seen anything like we're witnessing right now. It is a very sad thing for our country. Uh, it's poisoning the blood of our country. Uh, it's so bad. And people are coming in with disease. People are coming in with, with every possible thing that you can have. And I got to know a lot of the heads of these countries. They're very cunning people, very, you know, street smart people. Uh, they're, they run, if they're not street smart, they're not going to be there very long. And when they send up those caravans and I had it ended, I had, we had the safest border in the history of our country. I mean, meaning the history over the last 80 years. Sure. Before that, I assume it was probably not so bad. There was nobody around. Mm -hmm. But uh, we had the safest uh, in recorded history by far. Uh, the least amount of drugs in many, many decades, the least amount of human trafficking, which is a tremendous problem. But when you look at what's taking place now, nobody's... First of all, it's not sustainable by any country, including ours, even from a cost standpoint. And, you know, we built over 500 miles of wall. We were going to put up another 200 miles, and we had it bought. Everything was bought. Everything was purchased. They were going to ready. It could have been done within three weeks, another 200 miles, all done. And they didn't want to do it. When you look at the numbers of people coming in, and the numbers, Rahim, are much bigger than anybody understands. I really believe it's going to be 15 million people by the end of this year, during this administration. That's larger than New York State. Okay, this is what we have. And look. Even the Democrats are talking about it now. Oh, right? yeah, they're the talking Democrat about it. But the media is not writing much about yeah. it. It's amazing. The, uh, the fake news is not writing much about it. You know, if you turn on to uh, outside of uh, Newsmax and Fox and a couple, right. nobody's even reporting on mm. this thing. I mean, uh, you watch ABC News and NBC News and you watch CBS, they don't even, they hardly talk about it. No. Doesn't it's a narrative. tremendous national tragedy. And I'll get inflation down, I'll get the economy roaring again, I'll do all this, but this is a hard problem that we've got to take care of. And uh, we are going to take care of it. This yeah, is a very, the, this is a very bad problem, a very dangerous problem for our country. The announcements. I mean, it, it, it's to the point where you have to get more strict than this than even when yeah. you were campaigning in fifteen oh, sixteen. Yeah. Well, right? We had it all closed up. We were doing a great job. Everybody. In fact, the other day I noticed on one of the telecasts they said Trump had no terrorist reporting, none, mm. yeah. for a long period of time. Yeah. In twenty nineteen, mm -hmm. there were none. Now we're setting record numbers. That's on just one category, a thing called terrorists. Not good. Right. Not a good category. Right. So we'll get, it, we'll get it going. So you make the point about the press uh, and the media, and, and yeah, I think most of the media is quite hostile towards you. One of the ones that I think people are surprised that has been hostile towards you has been Fox, especially recently. Yeah. Um, Murdoch says he's out. What do you think? Well, I wish him luck. Uh, we've done fine with Fox. We've done well with Fox. Over the years, uh, Roger Ailes was a great guy and a friend of mine, somebody I respected a lot. He did a fantastic job. Uh, they pick their opponents. Perhaps it's their globalists. Who knows why? 
Uh, we had the greatest economy in history. We had the strongest border in history. We cut taxes uh, greater than Ronald Reagan. You know, our tax cut was bigger than the Reagan tax cut, which was also very big. Uh, we had, uh, we did things with regulations. That's why we had the best job numbers. Anyone, we had the best economy in history. Uh, but somehow, I j there's just an edge there. Mm. You know, if you look at the anchors, uh, you take a look at Sean Hannity. Uh, Laura's been great. They're, they've all been, I mean, they've been good. But there's an overhang that you just feel there's something missing. Do you think he's does that going, make uh, sense to you? It does. But do you think he's going because he kind of went all in against you in this primary cycle, and I think he's kind of realized now that he's not going to win that battle. Do you think that's why he's kind of shuffling himself? Well, out? they put everything against the sanctimonious, and he's no, he's not a talented person. You know, he's just not a talented person. Don't forget, he only won because I endorsed him. He was at three percent. He was dead, and I endorsed him and. The reason I go after him so hard, because how, who does that? Right. Well, you get somebody in, he went up to 71 or something like that, but he was he, to the Secretary of Agriculture, who was, uh, I guess he was at 41 or 42 percent. He was leading by many, many, many points. It wasn't even a contest. I endorsed him, and he became a rocket ship. He went up like a rocket ship. And then he, uh, in screaming to him, will you, you know, four years later, will you run against the president? I have no comment. And I said, no comment to mean, means he's running. So I hit him very hard. Look, uh, I think it's a bad seed when that happens. Mm. I'm a very loyal person. You know, it's very interesting. All of my great geniuses, my consultants, you know, all these wonderful people that make a lot of money and then you end up doing what they don't tell you to do sometimes. But uh, they said, loyalty doesn't mean anything. People don't care whether or not he was loyal to you. I said, I think it does matter. And it shows it character. It's the character of the man. Well, it says something. I mean, it says something, but I think that's the reason he went down so much. People said that's terrible. I also think he doesn't, uh, he doesn't connect to an audience at all. He doesn't connect. He hasn't connected. It's a he couldn't sign the ball. bartender's shirt at the, Iowa, well, at the Iowa pub. I don't think that would have worked. But he also, he copies so much, mm. you know? I say, we're a nation in decline. All of a sudden he's saying we're a nation in decline. We are a failing nation. All of a sudden he says, we are a failing nation. Uh, he throws the hats the same as I do. Goes, shoom, shoom. They don't I go say, as far. I don't even do it anymore. <laughs> but, you know, because of that, I don't even do it anymore. So. Uh, Is he a plagiarist? No, he's not a not a plagiarist. I don't care. He, but uh, you know, I do the hats when I come in. Sometimes, not often, but sometimes. And all of a sudden, he's doing the hats. He's throwing out red hats, and he's doing the same way. The flick of the wrist, he's thrown off low. Yeah, the imitation so, is the sincerest form no, of flattery. No, but, but yeah. I just think that. Uh, he has not caught on. No. And Fox put a fortune behind him, and they don't feel so good about it. Now, I guess, I think I, I, think I know who they're trying now, but it's not going to work. No it's chance. Be the person has uh, no chance. I won't say, but the person mm. has zero chance. Mm. And uh, that wouldn't have happened with Roger Ailes. Mm. It would not have happened with Roger Ailes. But, uh, so, you know, the anchors are so good, and uh, Jesse's been great. Mm. Uh, Greg's been great. Greg Gunfeld has been. Yep. I mean, look at what he's done, mm -hmm. right? Uh, they've all been. They've all been good. You look on Saturday; it's fantastic with with uh, Pete Hegseth and mm. Rachel and Will. Uh, so we get a lot of you know good support. Sure. And lately, Brian Kilmeade's been great, but Steve Ducey's been terrible. I mean, to me, he's been just terrible. I think he's hurting the show. Has and, he ever been good? Uh, Ainsley's good. Yeah. But no, I don't know. You know. Steve Ducey is interesting because he's always been so nice to me for mm. years, for years, going back to 2016. In fact, when I won New Hampshire in 2016, that was a big deal. And they had every news anchor wanting to interview him. I let him do it, and he did it. And he wasn't even really the appropriate one to do it. But I, you know, I'm, I am loyal to people. Sure. And I had a great relationship with him. But I would say over the last uh, year, I don't know, he just seems to be... Um, not nice like he should mm. be, maybe. And maybe I'm wrong about that, but even this morning, Brian Kilmeade was actually very good. He's, he's actually changed. I you mean, still watch it a lot, then? I, I watch it, yeah, yeah, I watch it. I watch it, I watch Newsmax, mm. and I try not to watch the other. There's so much fake news. I mean, honestly, somebody like MSNBC, it's so bad and so vicious, and same thing with CNN, but maybe even to a lesser extent. Mm. But, but I watch these two, 
And honestly, it's a campaign contribution, right. what they do. Right. It's a campaign contribution, and they should pay a lot of money. Somebody has to pay for this, right. because that's an absolute campaign contribution, and th they can't be allowed to be able to get away with this. It's so unfair. Back to that nickname, De Sanctimonious, because I think when you first used it, a lot of people kind of didn't get it. And you're they love it now. But it, it, it does reflect that. I mean, a lot of his online supporters, you see a lot of that sanctimony coming out in them. I mean, one of them last week said he thinks the founding fathers are in hell. I mean, I don't understand, you know, who could possibly, even if you think it, why would you say that, right? Yeah. Um, so how did you hone in on that about Ron? Well, just an ungrateful person. Mm. Uh, he was out of a political career. He left Congress. He campaigned. And without me, he campaigned, and he was at nothing. He, he had almost nothing. He had no money. He had no ratings. He had no polling, no nothing. And when I endorsed him, and frankly, I didn't think he could do very well even with the endorsement. Mm -hmm. And you know, we're about not, almost 99% why I, when I endorse somebody right. for a primary. And frankly, like the midterms, on the midterms, out of 253 endorsements, I won 233 yeah. times. Nobody no, I, wants to I report that. that. That's, yeah. you know, general election yeah. stuff. But I endorsed only two, you know, 253, and that's a lot less than Rand. I don't endorse everybody. But we didn't do well. On the, the Republicans didn't do well. Right. I think I know why, because right. they didn't know how to talk about abortion properly. Yeah. If they knew how to talk about abortion properly, because they're the radicals, we're not the radicals, we did a great thing on that mm -hmm. with Roe v. Wade. We gave all the power to the pro-life, and something can be done now. They had no power whatsoever. Babies could be killed in the seventh, eighth, and ninth month, and even after birth. Yep. I mean, you saw the governor of Virginia, the former governor of Virginia. I saw the Meet the Press interview about it. You know, we say meet the fake press, yeah. and this is meet the real press. Yeah, right. But I saw that interview, and she was denying that that even existed. It's, yeah. it's absolutely true that that's what they were pushing for. But on that question, so, Obviously, I mean, I've been rereading The Art of the Deal, by the way, right. in, in recent weeks. Yeah. No, That's but good. very specifically to kind of get more to grips with, like, back in that New York state of mind as well, that you, you know, you lived in that studio in Lenox Hill. Right. I spend a lot of time up there now. I mean, you were right next to J.G. Mellon, right? And th those are all the spots, and it's, it's, it's unrecognizable, some of that now, right? But one of the things that stood out to me uh, in The Art of the Deal is, is that, you know, you're putting this thing forward now on abortion to say, hey, listen, the country is sick of having this argument all the time. They actually want a solution to it, right? But if the Democrats now come back around, so you don't have to explain this to me, but if the Democrats come back to you and say, no, we're not interested in a deal with you, are you willing to then say, well, look, we tried. Now sure. these Republicans are going to do oh, what they're sure. going to do. Sure. But the Democrats are the radicals yeah. because they're willing to, remember I said during my debate with Hillary, no longer crooked Hillary. I call her beautiful Hillary because I've used the word crooked for Joe Biden because it's so accurate. And I don't like you, you know, with enough words, you don't have to use the same word when two people. Yep. But uh, I said, rip the baby out of the womb in the seventh, eighth, ninth month. And that really shook people up. Nobody ever heard of the term. Right. You know, I never knew the term before that debate. Right. I just, we were talking about it. And I said, she's willing to rip the baby out of the womb in the ninth month. No Democrat wants that, mm. meaning almost no Democrat. Right. There are some probably that don't care. But like the grassroots Democrats yeah, don't yeah, want Yeah, but they don't, they don't want that. Mm. So they're really the radical because mm -hmm. that's what we don't want to do. I think something can happen. This is an issue that's been going on for 52 years. I was able to end it. That gave tremendous negotiating power to the pro-life movement. Tremendous negotiating power. Because they can't do the things that they used to be able to do. The pro-life was fighting it. We have these groups fighting this thing for so many decades. But it's exactly 52 years right. as of a date in the not-too-distant future. And that's a long time. Everybody's raising money all the time. Everybody, I don't know, maybe it's some kind of a business. I don't know what's going on. But it's a lot of money. Everybody was amazed that I was able to do it. And I put them in a great negotiating position. And we don't want to blow it. Mm -hmm. This is an incredible thing that happened. And we also bring it back to the states, which everybody, all legal scholars, both sides wanted it brought back to the states. We did a lot of things. Uh, we're in a tremendous position to negotiate something very good right now, and uh, we'll see what that is. A lot of people take up office and, and they want to impose their 
will and their ideas. Yeah. You almost come at the issues more of a mediator role. Is that well, right? a mediator. And but remember this too: we have to win elections. Mm. I can take a view. I can tell you my view is a strong view, but we have to win elections. Mm. You know, you can say, "Oh, uh, I think Ron." As I call him, also de sanctis. Mm. You know, that's an abbreviated de sanctimonious, right? You understand? Have you ever put the words up together? It's sort of amazing, just the middle part. Fits better in a tweet. It's sort of pretty cool. Yeah. But he did the six week thing. Yeah. If you notice, his numbers started going down right. before that. Yeah. But they started to really crash when he did that. Because most people, that's not acceptable to. You have to win elections. Yeah. We want to get everything done. and. You also have to go by your heart. You know, if you're a person that believes strongly, then you should just say, that's the way it is, and I don't want to talk about it. But you have to win elections. And the reason that the Republicans didn't do well in the midterms is because they didn't know how to talk about the abortion issue. Right. If you look at Michigan, uh, you take a look at the governor's race in Michigan, you take a look at the governor's race in Pennsylvania, uh, it's fine for them to believe and let them go. but. They did not come close to winning an election right. that really were elections that you could have won. Right. So this is a very uh, amazing issue. It's a beautiful issue. It's a complex issue. If we get it right, it's going to be something really, something really special. But in all of this, whether we like it or not, you still have to be able to win an election. Right. And if the other side's going to take this issue and make you be the radical, mm -hmm because they're the radical, and I explain it. And the problem is you have Republican politicians, some do, but you have a lot of Republican politicians that don't know how to talk about the issues, and you have some that don't want to talk about right. it. They're afraid of the issue, and it actually can be a positive issue for them. And I think I've made it a po positive issue for me and for some Republicans, but uh, it's something that has to be talked about. I'll ask you about Mike Pence, um, your former vice president, and you, you, can, you are consistently very nice about him. And if you don't mind me saying, he's being a bit of a dick about you at the moment. Like, how do you, how do you absorb that and see that? And, and you're constantly just very nice in response. Well, look, I took Mike. It looked like he was going to lose in Indiana, a great state where we've done very well. In fact, Jim Banks, I endorsed him. Everybody dropped out. I think he's going to run unopposed, if you can believe it. Yeah. This is, you know, in a great state like that. It's pretty unusual. He's a great guy. He's great. Yeah. Uh, but I took Mike. He was going to lose, I think. And he was down substantially. And I brought him off the heap. And uh, I was happy with Mike for years. And then he did this move. Now, remember this. They said he had to be a human conveyor belt. Those. Votes have to go right into Mitch McConnell, who, by the way, is very bad for the Republican Party. I mean, he's almost like a Democrat vote. He gives them whatever they want. I don't know what's wrong with this guy. There's something wrong. But they wanted those votes to go right up. I said, what happens if there's fraud? What happens? It doesn't matter. He has absolutely no power, absolutely none. And he believed that, and his lawyers told him that, but a lot of other lawyers felt differently, that he did have power. He could have sent those votes back to the legislatures. And, you know, you can go back a long time ago. Uh, Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson kept the votes from Georgia. They right. weren't able to properly tabulate. He kept the votes. But I'm not going back that far. We'll go back just till the election. He had the right to do it. You know why? Because right after the election was over, they, they all said, it. they changed <laughs> the law yes. so that the vice president can't do what I said he could mm -hmm. do. Very deceptive, very terrible. And they convinced him and his people, Democrats did, but they convinced him and his people that he had absolute right. So I said, so he, I call him the human conveyor belt. So what he did, if he would have sent those votes back, and by that time, if you know, Pennsylvania, the legislature, uh, other legislatures, they were not liking what they were finding out because right. a lot of time had passed. And it would have been very interesting to see. But even if they confirmed it and sent it back, Mike Pence would have been popular. But he wouldn't do it. Do you think he knows this now, or do you think he still well, thinks he's I think he, he must right know thing? it because what happened is the uh, rhinos got together with the Democrats right after the election, and they changed the law so that he actually couldn't do it. Now he can't do it. Yeah. But there were a lot of very good lawyers that said he absolutely can do it, or he probably can do it. And based on that, I said, well, you should would be really good for the country. And I think you could have said there's a lot of dispute. 
There's a lot of anger. I'm going to take one week, send it back to five or six legislatures, and at the end of the week, they have to give us their answer, their response. It's a one-week thing. The Democrats would have complained, but nobody could have really been that upset with it. You could have done right. that. We're not taking the votes. We're just sending them back to legislatures. Mm -hmm. And he didn't want to do that. If he did that, even if the votes came back in a similar fashion, yep. which I don't really think they would have, mm -hmm. But even if they came back in a similar fashion, if he did that, he'd be popular today. Instead, he said, I see a poll just came out. He's at 2%. People That's within the margin out. of error, by the way. No, I know. <laughs> it's, it's probably zero. No, it's sad. <laughs> I had a very good relationship with him until the end. Yeah. You ever just want to text him and say, hey, knock it off? No. He's getting very bad advice. I mean, I know the people giving it to him. He's getting very bad advice, I think. And the voters aren't standing for it because he's, you know, not done well. I, I would have done, I would have done the exact opposite. I would have done, the ex if I were him, I would mm. have done the exact opposite. But he really has, uh, he's been given information that's been bad. But he was given that voter information, and you understand. Yep. And, you know, the typical rhinos, it was the typical rhinos, and it was the Democrats yep. got together and they changed it. Go ahead. Matt Gates for Florida governor? Well, he's a great guy. I mean, he's great. He's a, a wonderful person. Uh, he's strong. He went through hell for two years over something that I never believed for a second. Uh, and he held up very strong. He was very strong. A lot of guys can't hold up to that. And uh, they put themselves in a corner, put their thumb in their mouth, and they say, Mama, take me home, get me out of here. And Matt was strong. Um, now, what he goes through, I go through times 10, but it's okay because I see the love, I see the people, I see what we're doing, I know we're right. It's a scam. It's another scam. It's Russia, Russia, Russia all over again. It's, it's I could name many of them. Right. The Mueller report, which, by the way, came out no collusion, but right. we went through years. I was of, here when that happened. I was yeah. on the terrace out here. Oh, when it was announced? Yeah. Well, it was a great thing. It was yeah. a great, a great victory. But we went through two and a half years, and it was a scam. Think of it. It was a whole big scam. It was something that was set up. They knew it was phony. And yet, we had to go through two and a half years and waste all that time, all that money. It's a disgrace. But no, I think Matt is a very talented guy. Yeah. I'm cognizant of time, so I don't want to take, I don't want to take up too much okay. of your time. But I also remember this one part in the art of the deal, where you're talking about the rink, right, in Central Park. Right. And you said about the press, you said, well, as long as I kept pouring the concrete, they kept snapping. That's right. So I'm just going to keep snapping until you stop pouring it. That's right. Okay. Um, just a couple of, like, really, like, I'm, I'm more interested in, you know, President Trump the man as well, just more than just the politician. It frustrates me sometimes that it feels like the left, your enemies get to write your legacy. Do you have any plans to do that yourself? An autobiography, yeah, something like that? I will when we're finished. Mm. We're having more response. Look, 2016 was something that nobody had ever seen in political history, this country. Do you know in the country, uh, you had 92% politicians and 8% generals, right? They became president. Yeah. So now you have this outsider coming in who's a successful business guy. And he comes in and he wins. And it was shocking to people. We did better the second time. We did much better. We got millions more votes yeah. the second time, which, you know, people don't like to say, but meaning the enemy doesn't like yeah. to say, but our people like to say it. And the spirit we had was unbelievable. The spirit we have now, number three, this is the greatest spirit I've ever seen. Leaving, I mean, we just left Iowa. We just left New Hampshire. We just left uh, South Carolina, where we're going again on next week, uh, the level of love and spirit. And I think what they do is uh, they like what I say. I think they like me. You know, they like to say they like his policy, but they don't like him. I think they like me. Why wouldn't they like me? But but the level of spirit, I've never seen anything like it. I don't think there's you? ever been anything like it politically. And the Democrats are worried about it. You know, they're the party of misinformation and disinformation, right? Very close words, but I'll give them both. Uh, they say, oh, we want to run against Trump. Well, now they're not saying that anymore because all the polls have me way up on Biden. And none of the other Republicans are up on Biden, which is actually surprising to me because I think he's so bad. He's but you most, don't think it's going to be Biden? I don't know. I, I don't imagine he gets to the starting gate, but maybe he will look. He's the most incompetent president in history. 
He can't put two sentences together. Worst than Yeah, he's the best thing that ever happened to Jimmy Carter, actually. He's the most incompetent president in history. Uh, he is, uh, there's something wrong. If it's not him, who's it gonna be? He's also the most corrupt mm. president in history, without question. Sure. Uh, I don't know, mm. uh, there'll be a fight. I don't think that Kamala gets it handed. You know, a lot of people are so afraid to go against her. I don't think it gets handed. I think all of a sudden everybody would start jumping in. She'd have to earn it. It'd be very hard to earn. Uh, but I don't know, you know, they're the same five or six people that you report on and you Michelle see all Obama. the time. I don't see that, no, no. I don't see it, no. Gavin Newsom? Yeah, probably, yeah. I think so, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm also interested in, you know, there, is, there are little interviews and things that float around on Instagram of you, you know, talking about your father, talking about your brother, and it, it yeah. got me to think, like, who do you think in your life you maybe miss the most, living or dead, but people who you don't get to talk to every day anymore, who do you miss the most? Well, I had two really good brothers, right? And both passed away. One had a, a problem with alcohol. It taught me so much because he said, don't drink and, you know, don't drink. At that yeah. time, this was a long time ago, uh, drugs were not a big factor, but alcohol was. Yeah. And he was very insistent on, don't drink, don't smoke. He said, don't smoke. And that was another thing that he added in, but he, it had a big impact on me. Uh, but I had a father that I was very close to. Uh, my other brother, Robert, I was very close to, passed away two years ago. Mm. A, a wonderful guy. He was so proud of me. He was so proud of the fact that I became president. He was uh, amazing. You know, a lot of siblings, they're jealous. They don't, you know, oh, I'm just as good as him or something. You know, it's, sure. you have that. and. Maybe it's natural, maybe it's not natural, but you have it a lot, probably much more so than not. And he was great. He was a great supporter of mine. He thought it was so incredible. He couldn't believe it. And uh, so we miss him uh, and I miss my father. You learn from people. My father was a great guy. He was very strong, very tough, but he had a tremendous heart, mm -hmm. a tremendous heart. He was very generous in so many ways. You wouldn't know that. He loved what he did. He was a builder in Brooklyn, mostly, in Queens. And he loved work. And it taught me, uh, you have to love what you do to be good at it. He was good at it. And you have to love what you do. I don't see people, I, I study it. I wrote books on it, lots of books. Successful books. And I just see that successful people are always loving what they do. Mm. And they work. 24 hours a day, but when they work 24 hours a day, it's not really work, you know? It's not work. You they love what you do? Yeah, I do. I love what I do, and I love now doing this, because we really, you know, the theme is make America great again. How does it get better than that? I watch Biden say, and those MAGA people, MAGA is make America great again. I don't think he understands that. I think if you asked him, what does MAGA stand for? I don't think he'd even know, to be honest. Give him a test. That's a great question for him someday. What does MAGA stand <laughs> for? I'll bet you he couldn't tell you that. Mm. But it's make America great again. And we made America, we had the greatest economy in history. We, look, I beat ISIS. With the things we did, I rebuilt the military, 85 billion he gave to, just gave to Afghanistan. Right. He gave it to the Taliban, no reason for that. We were getting out, we would have gotten out with strength and dignity. I think it was the lowest point in the history of our country. But, uh, I learned a lot from my father, but more than anything else, I learned that uh, you have to love what you do. He loved working. Just finally wanted to ask you, and it's strange for me as well. I think it's strange for probably everybody that comes into contact with you. You are the most famous man on planet Earth. I mean, I think the most recognizable man, the, you know, the amount of column inches, you talk about this in the book as well, you know, the, the, the earned media behind everything, earned right? Earned media, that's right. Earned media. I, I'm just fascinated by that concept. Is that something you think about? Do you look in the mirror and see, you know, the most famous man in the world, or have you just always been the same guy? So, I was playing golf a month ago with a very successful guy, and he's not a bad golfer, and he was playing terribly. And I said, are you okay? What's wrong with you? You always play better than this. What's wrong? I was, you know, being a little bit nasty to him by saying that, because <laughs> that's not very nice. But I'm saying, you're playing terribly. What's wrong? He said, you don't understand. You're the most famous person in the world. And I'm very nervous. I said, yeah, but you've known me for 
15, 20 years. Why are you doing I said, no, you're the most famous person in the world. I said, no, I'm not. The most famous person in the world is Jesus Christ. He said, huh. I never thought of that. I thought it was sort of cool, actually. Yeah. I thought it was rather nice. But it was very funny. Uh, and I asked him that. But he said the same thing. I don't think about it. I don't want to think about it. You're possibly right. Yeah. Because I know the competition. But I just want to do something really great. Our country is in such trouble right now. Right now. I don't think we've ever been, we've never been in this danger. We're close to World War III. And if you saw the power of the weaponry with the nuclear weapons, I saw Biden the other day at the United Nations say he got rid of all the gas, the gas, the gas bombs. Are, they're terrible. They're vicious, terrible. And then he said, or he alluded to the fact, but other nations have not followed suit. Of course, they're not going to follow suit. Right. You got to do it simultaneously or let them do it first or make them do it. But now we've spent billions and billions of dollars building and now he just does it for nothing. He does it for nothing. And the day before that, he gave $6 billion. Think of it, $6 billion to Iran for five hostages. Now, they got five, we got five, but they also got $6 billion, meaning they freed up the money, which is really the same thing. I think it's the same thing. They said they're going to use it for whatever they want. And, then they get, and he's saying they're only going to use it for humanitarian reasons. But the people in charge said, no, we can use this money for whatever we want. Mm. I think these are the dumbest people I've ever seen. All they are good at is cheating in elections. All they're good at is you take a look at the election interference. This is all about election interference. If I weren't in first place, if I was at third place, fourth place, or if I wasn't running, none of this would have happened. They indicted me for purposes of election interference. And these indictments are scams. And it's a shame. It's a horrible thing. This is third world country. This is banana republic stuff. That's what they do. This, I never thought this could happen in this country. And that's why I now hit him hard. You know, out of respect for the office. Look, the man's obviously incompetent. He can't even speak. Right. The man is grossly incompetent. I just watched him today with Zelensky handing over money, money, just like nothing. It's like taking candy from a baby. With the government shut down on the horizon, they're shipping over money a budget. off to Ukraine. And we're handing... Right. And here's the other problem. Look, I feel very badly for the Ukrainian people. They're great people. Here's the problem. Europe isn't paying their share. Oh. Europe's in for 25 billion and we're in for 200 billion. Now, it affects everybody, but it affects Europe a heck of a lot more than it affects us. So, you know, I did that with NATO. NATO, they weren't paying up, 28 countries, and almost all of them were not paid up. They owed hundreds of billions of dollars, and we were spending th three times, four times more than we were supposed to, just keeping it together right. for them. And then they took advantage of us on trade. So on top of everything else, they, you know. And I said, listen, if you don't pay, we're not gonna defend you any longer. And the head of a major country stood up. This was a closed meeting. He said, do you mean if Russia attacks us, if we are not paid up? He said, if you're not paid up, if you're delinquent, which you are right now in his case, that means if you get attacked, we're not going to do any defense of you. We're not going to do any defense. The money poured in like you wouldn't believe, hundreds of billions of dollars. And the Secretary General Stoltenberg said, I've never seen anything like it. Now, I don't know if he still says that, but he said it at the time. He said, I've never seen Obama would come, make a speech and leave. Bush would come, make a speech and leave. Trump would come, say, what's wrong with your books here? Nobody's paying. We're paying for you. And uh, this is the same thing. You're going to have to do it all over again. Well, but think of it. It's the same thing. We're in for 200 billion, and Europe, which is deathly affected by this, okay? They're right next to each other. So Europe, think of this is in for $25 billion, and they're not doing anything. And they're saying, why should we do it when the stupid leaders of the United States are doing it? Why should they do it? And I would say the same thing. If you don't have to do it, you don't have to do it. Mm. But he gives money away like it's candy. And it's a very, very bad thing he's doing, a very bad thing. So number one, there should be equalization. Europe has to catch up with us. At least we have to go 50-50. We're in 200 billion. I think the number's higher than 200 billion, but we're, we're in for 200 billion, they're in for 25 billion. And they're much more affected than we are. So it's very sad. Look, 
We're run by, we have a, a president, sadly, where the borders are the worst they've ever been in history. We keep, people can't even believe it. You know, when people from other places, other parts of the world, and even from our part of the world, when they look at this, including Democrats, by the way, they cannot believe that millions of people are pouring through our borders and we have no idea who they are. We have no idea. Right. And we're gonna have to be living with this for a while, but we're gonna do something in terms of deportation that's going to be a miracle. We're gonna clean up our country. Our country is a mess. Our country's going down. And if we don't win this election, Raheem, I will tell you, if this election's not won by us, I don't think our country makes it. I think our country's gonna be a tremendous failure. It's gonna be, uh, Venezuela, before we started buying oil from them, can you believe Venezuela? We're buying their oil, we're making them rich. And they have the worst oil, you know, it's tar. Yep. And you know where we, where we take care of the tar, where we refine it? Houston. Mm. So it all goes up into the air in Houston, right? When they talk about this, it's very poor grade. They have a lot of it. But we're making them rich. Mm. They were the enemy. They were the enemy. Yep. So we're making them rich. And we have, we're sitting on the greatest supply of oil. I call it, I call it liquid gold. We have more than anybody and it's good. It's real good. And we don't use it. We go to Venezuela and other places. It is so sad what's happening to our country. Our country's never been, and we're in serious danger of World War III. Mm. And I promise you, when we win, there will never be World War III. It's not going to happen. Well, I hope that is very true. I've taken up too much of your time, but thank you so much for being with us here on thank the National Pulse. We really appreciate thank you it. Thank and you thank you for everything. Time. Absolutely. A great professional. Thank we appreciate so it. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Well, if you enjoyed that, make sure you come back to thenationalpulse.com and sign up. Support real news, radically independent news at thenationalpulse.com forward slash upgrade. <laughs>